used to sit and talk with you We were both 16 and it felt so right Sleeping all day, staying up all night Staying up all Hey, you're fine, man. How are you doing? How's everything going, William? Really, really good, man. Um, you, you can still call me Ryan. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, w William is my first name, carried uh, from, on from my grandfather and my mom's side. Sure. Uh, but my parents called me my middle name when I was a kid. But um, in life after yellow card, I just thought for artistic purposes to sort of differentiate the two. Right, uh, right. I would, I would use my full name for music releases, but we're still buds. You can call me Ryan. That's what we figured. That's what we figured, <laughs> Ryan. And by the way, you know, great to have you on the show. I mean, and first order of business, Ryan, before we start, is to congratulate you on, on the EP, Everything Except Desire. I mean, it Thank has you. to be, I mean, this has to be, Ryan, one of the great rock experimental albums that like we have heard, honestly. I mean, when we were listening to it last week with my producer, Sam, you know, we were thinking of Passengers from U2, Kid A from Radiohead, The Magical Mystery Tour, just stuff that throws you off base in the best way, man. So first of all, congratulations, Ryan, for real. Well, thank you. That is, uh, that is extremely high praise. Um, you know, I, I just, this is where I live as a listener to music and have for a long time. Um, I'm not sure why it took me, you know, five years of uh, or four four or five years of, of making my own music to sort of reach this place where uh as soon as i reached it i knew like this is where i should have been all along kind of feeling you know what i mean um yeah these songs just felt so uh so natural like they just came they the way they uh the way they came to be like it was it was just such a cool and strange experience being in, at the height of the pandemic in 2020 is when i produced these songs and wrote them um so it was kind of all i had all i was doing was music you know every day i wasn't really um I, i was taking the pandemic very seriously i was really i was uh near my parents a lot um sure. Sure. and and wanted to keep them safe so i was really you know it was a lot of solitude and um a, a lot of time to myself and and i really poured myself into these songs during that time so um yeah it's uh you know i think that's just to say how different these songs are um to they, they may feel very different um you know to a listener looking in from the outside but for me they feel uh they feel so true to just who i am as a musician and a writer now yeah absolutely i love that and where did you spend the pandemic with your parents were you in florida were you in tennessee so, were you yeah so so i moved i left tennessee after almost six years to go uh to move back to la in uh the fall of 2019 gotcha. um I've been working with Ryan Mendez, our uh, Yellow Cards guitarist, and I have been working together since the band broke up on, on music. And we're both uh, really, really trying to make some headway and break into scoring for film and television. Um, nice. And so we're working together a lot. And I felt like I have my, my, my I have family in Los Angeles still, too. My niece and nephew are there, my sister. I, so I just was like, you know, let's give it a shot. Let's go out there, be close to Ryan. We can work together every day. <clears throat> you know, big, big risk. It's a it's a huge change to go back to affording to live in Los Angeles after you've lived in Nashville for five or six years, you know, it's a, it's, it's, 
California is freaking expensive. And so Absolutely. I got out, I got out there, we were working, everything was going great. Pandemic hit in March of 2020. You know, I had right. only been there for like six months. Um, I, I, I had a tour planned in the summer um, that was going really well. Like the planning of the tour was going really well. And these days, uh, as much as I'm trying to transition into working in the studio full time and working on scoring, composing and stuff, I, I still have to make money and those things aren't paying me yet. You know, I'm doing a lot of Ryan and I both are doing a lot of pro bono work to try to sort of prove ourselves and show what we're capable of, you know, before we get any real, you know, paying jobs. So I'm able to go on tour, though, you know, once a year, twice a year, um, still it just me and my acoustic guitar, you know, or however I want to do it. And that really yeah. takes care, takes care of me for the year. So in 2020, you know, touring goes away. I'm now stuck. I'm in, not stuck. That's the wrong word, but I'm, I'm in California uh, with no idea what I'm going to do for the rest of the year, how I'm going to afford this, this place. I'm you now, you know, I went from owning a home to renting a home in California again. And you know, how I'm, I'm just, it, it was really a financial crisis, to be honest. That's all that, you know, that's the, the black and white of it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so many musicians and crew members, you know, and, and all walks of life went through this, obviously in the pandemic, how am I going to make a living? But especially those of us that are, you know, self-employed and, travel for work. I mean, that's like, you know, travel's gone. So how do you 100%. work? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got really freaked out. Um, this is all to tell you how I got close to my parents, but I got really freaked out staying in, in, in uh, LA without knowing how I was going to make a living, to be honest, it was really freaky. Um, so I kind of made a little pit stop back in Jacksonville, Florida, where I grew up. My, my, my uh, family has a little rental house here at the beach and no one was in it randomly. No one was renting the house. And, um, so I just kind of hold up there, set up my studio, and I was there for about eight or nine months, but I was only a mile away from my parents' house. So um, I saw them a lot. It's, it was pretty great. I, I haven't spent that much time with my parents since I was in high school. You know, it's been 20, yeah. 20 almost 25 years since I left home. Um, so getting to reconnect with them on a, on a daily basis like that was really, really special. Um, I, really, I really tried, man, um, you know, the EP included to make something positive out of, out of the pandemic and that time for my, for me, you know, um, I spent a lot of time just working on myself. I started meditating I started exercising again, full time, like Monday yeah, through you, Friday. You look great. You look great. I was uh, going to tell you. <laughs> thanks man. Yeah. Um, well, I've been off of my exercise regimen for too long because life has been so crazy been moving and doing all this crazy stuff. So, um, which funny enough to end of this story, I'm actually back in Florida now and we moved again. Um, so, I would, but I was in Florida. I was, you know, I, I tried to, to really work on, on my mental health and just stay positive and work a lot. Um, which, which, you know, is how the songs for the EP were born yeah. was through that time. And, um, <clears throat> late 2020, I, I did uh, decide, you know, I really wanted to be back up in Nashville. So I went up there, uh, got set back up in Nashville and just kept going, kept making music, kept producing cool, cool stuff is happening, has happened. Um, and through that time, I met my, uh, my girlfriend, who is my favorite human being on the planet and, you know, like the, the, my person, as they say. Um, and we just found a little place down here back in Jacksonville Beach near my parents. Um, and so I've been in the process of renovating a house down here through this whole release process. It's been crazy. Um, but we're here in Florida now. And uh, I should have um, my goal is to have my studio back up. It's, it's all you know, broken down now um, as we renovate this house. But my goal is to be back up and running uh, by March 1st and uh, have my little Patreon community um, back up and, and, and hang in again. So a lot going on, but uh, lovely, but all good things. Man, what a, what, what a great uh, walk through your, um, through your pandemic period there. And, and thank you for sharing it, Ryan. There's a lot to unwrap there. So, you know, but it, it makes perfect sense because this record, I mean, when, when you see things like Brighton, or, or any of them. I mean, it really is a product of like all these changes in your life. I don't think that in a normal cycle, in normal life, you can really dig these, like, this is a masterpiece, I think, Ryan. It's a product, like, am I right or am I wrong? That it's a product of like a unique circumstance in time. Uh, uh, 100% correct. I think that if I was, um, I, you know, I wasn't even really sure a uh, pre-pandemic how invested I wanted to stay in like releasing my own music and touring. I, I really wanted to get serious about composing and scoring. You know, I was like, how much longer can I keep taking away from that to go tour and do all the stuff I have to do and rather than just, just focus on this, you know? Um, yeah. And so I, I think 
but I, I think in the end, I, w- I would have continued to make, you know, I would have put out another record, whether it be another EP or a full length album at that point um, and have plans to tour that album because that's just what I was doing. And it, it always comes back to, well, that's how you're going to make a living, you know, is to go, go get on the road. And so I think if, if the pandemic hadn't happened and I would have just made another record, um, I, I don't think I would have. I've been saying in some interviews I've done that I was kind of like with this genre, this style of sort of ambient electronica and stuff that I'm, you know, f- that this EP is sort of showing that side of, um, of me as a writer. I think I was sort of like waist deep, you know, in, in, in the pool sort of thinking about wanting to do that someday. Sure. And sure. because I wasn't concerned about touring or anything, I was like, Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to make some music during the pandemic, I, I think I, you know, I jumped all the way in, so to speak. And there, there wasn't, it wasn't going to be like a fun little thing on the side to be like, well, but if I go out on tour, I have to take the band and do the guitars and, you know, I can, this was just an experiment and it was so fun. And I loved making the songs. So every aspect of it, writing, producing uh, the lyrics, just every, every part of making these songs was so killer because I was completely free. There was no, I didn't even know I was going to release them. I, they were just, they were just being made uh, for, for um, fans that have been a part of my Patreon page. Um, I, I kind of said, sign up for Patreon and I'll, I'll release a new song every month just for you guys. And that even, but, but there was no pressure there, you know, like right. I, I know that the people that are going to sign up for something like Patreon are so supportive of anything that I'm doing, which is amazing that I can do something like experiment with a six minute long instrumental electronic song right. you know and right. so so i don't know it was just yeah it was so i felt so free of my own expectations like I, i'm i'm pretty good these days later in my career at tuning out the noise from outside i don't really care what anybody thinks or wants out of me like i'm doing what i'm doing because i love it and and i'm making the music i want to make you know but there is still your own pressure you put on yourself it's like uh, especially when you're planning on taking it on the road uh, you know i'm a probably to a fault, a perfectionist of like how I want the show to be and go. And um, th- these songs were never meant to be on the road. There was never, they were, this was just me exploring in the studio. And I love it. And there was something really gratifying and, and freeing about that. Yeah, that's amazing. And you mentioned the songwriting, right? And, and you know, I mean, just, just going back to your like previous EPs, like, you know, 13 and Virtue. And of course, like, um, you know, the yellow card stuff, like it's so developed, your songwriting now. It's so fantastic. And I was wondering, I mean, there's this line in Brighton that says, I will, you know, elevate the uninvited so that I can feel a goddamn thing. Trouble is there is a broken person. You couldn't fix it in me. I mean, it's just jewel after jewel like that. So I guess the question, Ryan, is you lived in Nashville for so long. We're in Nashville. We're in the Gulch, songwriting capital of the world. Um, What's your process for songwriting? Is it like the Nashville style of 11 to 3, hammer out 20 songs every week, even if they suck? Or is it like you're in the beach with your parents, you know, the sun's coming down and you get the inspiration? Um, I've never been a quantity songwriter, Um, you know, all the way back to Yellow Cards early days and then on through our whole career. If if we were making a record, um, we we weren't the kind of band that had all kinds of demos and ideas laying around from the time in between the records. We would we would very much get focused. Okay, it's time to go make an album let's, you know, hole up together and write these songs. And so those, out, those records were always written at one time, sort of right when it was time to record them. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I still kind of work that way. Obviously this EP is different because the, the nature of how the songs were being done, as I said, it was sort of like one song per month for, for my Patreon page. So it wasn't really for an album. Um, but that said, I was just focused on those songs at that time. And I still very much work that way. When I first moved to Nashville, um, thinking I was going to get involved in the songwriting scene um, and try to do that professionally. It didn't take but like two months for me to just realize it was not for me. Um, that, that concept of like seven songs a week, you know, I just, I, I couldn't, I don't have the bandwidth for that. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. so focused on one idea. Like I, I'm not built to, to do that many songs in a, in, in a, in a short period of time. So, um, but my process as a writer is, is, um, it doesn't, it's, it's pretty much the same, whether I'm doing, uh, you know, a more organic guitar and, and drum driven thing like Virtue or 13 or this more, um, you know, uh, electronic track driven style. Um, I definitely, and, and as far back as I can remember, I mean, I think even um, on, on a lot of the yellow card records, I tend to like having the music first. So yeah. 
you know, having a demo that's like, we, we, as Yellow Card grew up and evolved as songwriters, we knew, we knew instrumentally, like, okay, this is what, an, this is an intro, this is, we'll bring it down for the verse, we'll bring it back up for the chorus. We could really, you know, we could write these interesting sort of tracks without, without me, more like I did when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old, coming into the band practice and saying like, here, I have a whole song, vocals, melody, everything, let's jam it. Um, we sort of had an understanding for how a song should feel, right? So we could write the music and then I can live with the demos and write whatever, whatever I feel like writing lyrically, melodically over the top of the, of the tracks. Um, so I've always written that way and I, I continued to this time. So with, with everything except desire, another thing, you know, I, I, I tried to be really conscious of, of my goals for, for film and television and trying to make these tracks as cinematic and sort of rising and falling and I as I could. Did that. Yeah. And, you know, imagining if I took, take the vocals away, does, does a, someone that does, you know, music placement, a producer for a show or a film or something, hear this track and, and see the edits to it, you know, because of how, how the track's moving. Um, and then put the vocals back in and it becomes something for listeners and fans. So it kind of was serving both purposes for me. Um, but that said, it, I, I very much wrote and like developed grew the, the tracks, the music before I wrote any of the um, lyrics or melodies on, on the CP. Amazing. Amazing, Ryan. I mean, you're being so good with your time. Thank you. I could talk to you for days. Indulge me, if you don't mind, uh, my audience, with, that, with a yellow card question really quickly. When I started sure. my career... In 2004, I started my career in, my, in South Florida and Miami radio. I mean, uh, boy, were you guys everywhere. I mean, yeah, the, the one, that was the year. The one distinct memory, Ryan, that I have, like when I was thinking about this, was the then called American Airlines Arena, August 2004. Uh, it was the MTV Video Music Awards. You know, we were there. You mm -hmm. guys were right smack in the middle of the show. You played Ocean's Avenue. People went absolutely nuts. MTV, what up? Let's fire! You know, what, what, you know, how do you remember this whirlwind time, Ryan? I mean, it really must have been like something else. How do you like back at this period? Um, there were, a, there were a lot of mo moments like the, the video music awards and, um, you know, re reaching platinum sales on Ocean Avenue, the song charting on top 40 radio. There are these moments that are such incredible memories and, still sort of hard to believe, you know? Um, but overall, you know, I've, I've really recently, um, I think the last couple of years, especially as I've sort of, the dust has really settled now that yellow card has ended, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, um, pretty set in, in doing my own thing, or at least my mind is set in where I want to go and what I'm doing. So I've, I've been able to finally kind of start unpacking it all, you know, all just, just kind of, what is what what scars do i still have uh from yellow card and what you know what positive things do i still have and how do i kind of separate these two um because i i look back at that time not with regret in any way um i i you know i wouldn't change anything because it, it's everything's gotten me where i am today um but I would, I definitely was not the healthiest time of my life. You know, I, I, I wasn't, I, it was, I was always seemingly overcome with like stress and anxiety. I, I like going from a garage band to the video music awards in literally two and a half years. Uh, I did not have the tools to, to deal with that, you know, me mentally, um, and emotionally I was, I was a mess. Um, and so, you know, I don't, uh, I don't want to like, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that the experience, you know, again, it's nothing that I regret. And I don't, I don't want to um, make fans feel like I don't think that that yellow card was the most special and amazing thing in my life because it was, and they are, um, you know, I, it's things for me, it's like lessons learned though. You know, I try to look at all those mistakes I made as, as lessons and not regrets. And, you know, one of them is I should have been more connected with the fans that supported the band. I should have, yeah. you know, I should have tried to nurture those relationships more. And I'm trying every day to do it now. 
um, because it's, you know, it, you can, you can say, well, it's too late. Well, that's then I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm trying every day to be a better person and, and, you know, nurture my career and, and be grateful and thankful for all the things that I have and uh, how, and I owe all of that to yellow card. Um, but that's not to say that yellow card wasn't a, it was a wild ride, man. It was, <laughs> it was yeah. so unexpected and it was so overwhelming. Um, and again, I, you know, while it was, it was super fun at times and it still blows my mind, the, 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 you know, these things hanging on the wall in my parents' office, it's, you know, it's, it's crazy, uh, to me that, that we, we climbed those, those mountains and accomplished those things. Um, but, but it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough road. It really was. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm just grateful that I got, you know, ma made it out alive. And, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful we have that second sort of second half of our career. Um, you know, I, I was able to look at the whole experience with a, through a very different lens the second time compared to the first time. Um, you know, and the, and the finale was, was so special. You know, the, the, the way that, that it, we tied it off, it, that was um, that was such a special thing for me because I, I was starting at that time, I was starting to really be aware of some of these things I'm talking about and some of these feelings and thoughts I was having about my time in the band and who I was as a person and an artist and a colleague and a friend and all these things. And so I was able to take that, that final experience and really like cherish it, you know, and really those shows were just on another level because I was so involved in them. I was so uh, you know, I wanted to absorb all of the, the, the whole experience, you know, the most that I could. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, 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 it was a ride, man. I mean, yeah, it sure was. It sure was. It sure was. I mean, you could still feel the ripple and let me leave you with this, Ryan. You're being awesome with your time. Thank you. You know, one of the cool things in research that we, that, that we just like connected to your life was how you have thrived off adversity now. Like it's one of the cool things that like we feel like where you are now, just, just, you know, you've had your obstacles, you mentioned a few of them in life, but the way that you have basically built a resilience to, to, to bounce back and to build life of adversity is a really special thing. And, and we even didn't know about the pandemic adversity you had and, and the way that like, you know, you look great and you're creating these beautiful things. What have you learned about adversity in your life, Ryan, that maybe you can share with me and my audience? You know, how have you like built this muscle of creating light out of darkness? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think I think lessons learned, you know, sort of as I was just talking about um, that where an older version of me would let adversity really kind of overcome my thoughts. And, and you know, I could get really um, overwhelmed with, as I said, like stress and anxiety. And that sort of feels like that was my whole existence for so many years. Um, and now I'm so aware of that. And I'm, and I'm so aware of, you know, the, the sort of the triggers and the things when, when, when I start to feel that way, I'm more self-aware that, oh, that's happening. And you're letting this situation, uh, you know, maybe turn negative, um, I'm able to stop it, but, you know, I have more tools to sort of turn the other way and stay positive than I used to. Um, and that, that's, that's really it. I mean, there is, there is sort of a fighting spirit of like, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm never going to give up on the dream of doing music professionally and making a living, playing and writing music. Um, and that is hard. You know, I, I was, I was in a, a band that was so fortunate and so successful for, for nearly two decades. Um, and now I'm trying to forge my own way. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a constant challenge, but the other option is to quit. And so, and that's just not, I don't have that's that in your DNA. Oh, exactly. I love that. <laughs> Ryan, you have said it all, my friend, perfect time to leave it there. I mean, what can I say? You know, everything except desire. What an EP guys, it's out already. Uh, oh, it, it's just a treat. It's just like an absolute treat to listeners and music lovers everywhere. Congratulations. Thanks, and uh, yeah, man, we, we wish you the best and hope to catch you around. All right, bud. Cheers. Thanks for your time. Bye.